Well, it hasn't even been two full days since he was shot at a campaign rally in Pennsylvania. But former President Donald Trump is set to be the center of attention as his party begins its nominating convention today in Milwaukee. A gathering of that size and nature is always a massive undertaking when it comes to security, something being looked at even more closely in the wake of the assassination attempt on candidate Trump, one which took the life of attendee Cora Compratore and wounded two others. Retired FBI Supervisory Special Agent and Certified FBI Crisis Manager Glenn Norling with me now live to discuss how security might be addressed as the grand old party meets under less than grand circumstances. Glenn, good morning to you. Oh, good morning. A pleasure to be here again. Well, first, you are an active shooter preparedness expert. So much has been said in just the last day and a half about what agents on the ground might not have done leading up to this rally shooting. But let's talk about what has to go into pulling off a safe event like that in the first place. I mean, there were law enforcement sharpshooters positioned and pointed at the building where the gunman was, which is part of the reason why he was taken down so quickly. Uh, absolutely. And, and of course, there's there's an extraordinary amount of planning and coordination and resources that goes into planning for for a significant special event like this. And one of the huge challenges of this, whether it's something like the conventions that are coming up this week, a national special security event um, headed up by the Secret Service or what we saw in Pennsylvania, there's a lot of coordination between agencies. And one of the biggest challenges out there is establishing those communication pathways between agencies so you can receive information, you can share that information and be able to react quickly and process that information and what we would call actionable intelligence so you can actually address those things. And I think we saw some of the challenges of that uh, resulted. And unfortunately, when you when you have the gaps like that that don't get filled, you can very much have a catastrophic event as we saw this weekend. As a civilian and as a working member of the media, I've been trapped in the lockdown of blocks and buildings that happens when someone like former President Trump is on the move coming to a particular area. It's a delicate balance, tying up a wide area and not snarling all the movement through a city. You can't just go wider and wider, right? There has to be some practical limit. Absolutely. And it's and it is always a continuous balance, essentially, between productivity and convenience and security. You know, I'll, one of the examples that I always like to talk about is to think about you have a building that has a state of the art security system. But in that building where you work or where you go to school, there's that one door that everybody continuously props open because it makes the day more convenient and more efficient and effective for them. Now, the best systems are going to actually alert that there's a door propped open or something like that. But you have such a simple thing like that that can make this great system that's been all put together um, just just be very ineffective and turn catastrophic like we saw this weekend. And it's those gaps that we really need to address. And going forward, as we look at the planning for the, the RNC, obviously these are significant discussions that are going on to make sure that we're addressing the gaps that we, that we saw in a, in a horrible way over this weekend. Obviously, you've worked with the Secret Service and local law enforcement doing different operations. The Secret Service has pointed to local agencies being tasked with securing some of the areas surrounding Saturday's rally in Pennsylvania. What is that kind of communication like or what, in your opinion, should it be like? Well, really, that's as, as I touched on before, it's got to be very effective. It's got to be very efficient. And that's and that's tough based based on the, the variety of backgrounds of the agencies. Essentially, you have a variety of Secret Service resources that come in, whether it's Secret Service or other agencies that are coming in. And you're trying to assemble this all into a very efficient and effective package for a short period of time. And that's and that's very difficult. You know, typically what I like to see in events like this is you have pairings you have. You don't have necessarily a local police officer or a deputy or or somebody like that out there by themselves they're paired together with somebody from the secret service so you're maintaining uh, quick communications you're maintaining access to all those resources immediately and those are type of the things that those redundancies that we try to build in to avoid things like we saw this weekend how challenging is it for the rnc that's starting today for campaigning in general to work out security these are supposed to be events during which voters can interact and even more than interact even get close to their chosen candidate and each other 
Uh, certainly, and, and especially uh, the, the the conventions themselves, they, they get an extraordinary amount of resources as a national special security event for these things. But it's that interaction, it's that interaction that, that we want, right? It's it's those we want to be able to talk to the candidates. We want to be able, be able to come up and and shake their hands and things like that. So you have all the resources that come together to try and facilitate those things. As we saw this weekend, outdoor events are extraordinarily hard to secure. And the, the movement of your principal, your protectee, your movement of them from in and out of vehicles and things like that is, is extraordinarily challenging. The benefit to, to Milwaukee is as a national special security event, you have the most robust of the resources from the Secret Service and federal government partners to bring to bear for those type of events. We may not be the target, but any one of us at any one of these events could be a victim, as we saw so tragically Saturday in Pennsylvania. If something does start to happen where we happen to be, what can we do to keep ourselves safe? Yeah, I absolutely want to address that because that's really where we need to try and get proactive where we're planning. So everybody, before you even enter the event, whether it's a concert, whether it's a, as I was this weekend at the the California Capitol Air Show um, with thousands, thousands of, of all of you there as well. So things like that. Have a plan, you know, and also get past the notion in the first place that you can't convince yourself that it won't happen here. You've got to have your mind open to the fact that we've got to have that plan. And if I've got a plan in place where I need to run, where I need to hide, if I can, I've got to conduct that plan as quickly as I possibly can. Don't sit there and wonder, is that fireworks? Is that the backfire of a 74 Pontiac out there? It's something I need to take action right now. And then also, lastly, if you see something that's concerning or suspicious, including online, we certainly have a significant amount of online postings that are concerning these days, um, you've got to say something. You've got to report that. And then on the law enforcement side, it's our challenge to be able to take that actionable intelligence and take immediate action against that so we can prevent things that we saw. Glenn, thank you so much for your insight today and what are very challenging times. We appreciate you. Yes, thank you very much. Have a great day.